Hello and welcome to today's quick little video. By request of a viewer, we're going to go through the process of replacing the battery in Game Boy cartridges. I wanted to do this repair on my old Pokemon games, but I can't seem to find them currently, so we have a copy of Mega Man Xtreme 2 that was released in 2001 and somehow still was working fine. But we're going to swap it regardless, so bye bye save data. Of which, when you go to do this, if you have any save data, it will be erased. To get started, we need to remove the 3.8mm security screw that's in the center of the cartridge on the back. Once it's removed, the case easily splits apart by sliding the front of the cartridge down about a quarter of an inch, and then it comes apart. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now we need to unsolder the existing battery from these two spots. The top is the positive terminal, and the bottom is the negative terminal. Desoldering the existing battery is extremely simple. Once your soldering iron is up to temperature, go ahead and press the tip against the solder pool to melt it and use your tweezers, or you could use your fingers if you're careful, to lift the battery up. Go back and forth on the terminals while applying upward pressure until it comes loose. I had to go back to the positive terminal as it was still barely attached. Before we attach the new battery, of which Game Boys use a CR1616 battery, though 2025s will work, sometimes they have fitment issues due to being just a tad bit thicker, we want to go ahead and add a little bit of flux and solder to the tabs. You don't want to leave your soldering iron on the tabs for very long, as you don't want to heat up and damage the battery. No more than 3 to 5 seconds should be all that's needed. We also want to add a tiny bit of flux to the pads before we put the battery back on. This is just to help the solder flow a tiny bit better. Now that we have the battery in place, we want to solder it back in. Note that all of the replacement batteries I've found are upside down compared to the original so make sure that the tab that's on the flat side of the battery is going up to the top terminal as the flat side of a button battery is the positive. If you accidentally solder in the battery backwards, it won't damage things. It just simply won't work. I did it on accident initially and had to redo it and reshoot that video. Now that you've gone back and replaced your battery, it's time to put the cartridge back together. Simply put the board back into the case, and then put the front case on top of it, and slide it up to set it into place. Once the case is back together, go ahead and put your tiny security screw back in. It's always so fun to do this when they're this small. With everything back together, it's time to test it out and make sure it works.
As we can see, all of my save data is definitely gone, which is what I expected. Go ahead and play through your game until you can save it and make sure it works. Do note that the save file will stay there until you power cycle the Game Boy, even if the battery is soldered in incorrectly. So make sure you turn it off and back on to make sure your save file is still there. And now that we're at the end of the video, I'm just going to leave this in here of me having to poorly play through the game to get to the save point. And that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful. And as always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. And before things fully close out, a quick shout out to our channel members. Dobby Lapuz, 